ladies and gentlemen, good morning or good afternoon. Honestly, I really don't know at which time of the day this will be broadcasted uh, to you in Down Under. It's my pleasure to talk about the Robotic Scope, a novel visualization tool for neurosurgery, as uh, in terms of a review in preclinical usability and clinical experience. I was asked to give this talk by Markus Hütter from BHS Technologies, the company and the manufacturer behind the robotic scope since we started um, a very fruitful cooperation some month ago. Um, I'd like to talk a bit, little bit about that. Um, my disclosures are irrelevant for the current topic. So what we are talking about is this. This is the robotic scope. It's a um, robotic arm with a mounted head um, camera system and the special thing about the robotic scope is that you are not looking into a screen but into a head mounted display that's attached to your head. How you control the robotic scope, how you operate that uh, tool is by a head up display that is um, charged by a foot switch and you have several functions here like the orbit mode, the um, uh, zoom the free view where you can readjust your view and the focus on the inner ring and on the outer ring you have several secondary functions like lifting of the head mounted display cam uh, displays, storing positions, recalling images uh, and so on. So what's necessary to use the robotic scope is that you control the, the tool with your head and with gestures so in this case you have to move your head left or right for several functions and up and down. But there's absolutely no need to do positions like this on the right side. So you should be very able to um, be in a very positive and upright posture with your body and head, which will probably decrease back pain or problems. So this is not necessary. Our preclinical usability uh, contained a training which was a standardized instruction and training of the users about 30 minutes of instruction to the robotic scope we um, evaluated 34 um, neurosurgeons consultants residents and interns uh, with a standardized test you can see on the right side it had 10 eyelets and they had to be threaded through with a 60 suture so if you look closely the eyelet was supposed to be centered in the robotic scope in the field of view and the needle was supposed to be threaded through from the colored side to the non-colored side and it should be very perpendicular to the um, to the eyelet. This was our setup. We had a, a table with the um, exercise in the middle. We had the robotic scope. We had different camera angles where the participants were recorded because at later on we did um, um, an analysis of the um, body postures. We had a multiple angle video analysis of this timed exercise and we also recorded operating errors concerning the interface. This is a image of the head posture analysis so we calculated uh, using a special software the head angle and the body angles um, of uh, starting from the baseline and correlated that with the participants satisfaction of usage of the robotic scope the appearance of pain and the accuracy of the exercise so we found that more experienced surgeons had more head tilt in general that means they wanted to move the robotic scope additionally by tilting the head, which is unnecessary, starting at 20 degrees. This had an influence on the movement of the robotic scope at around 25 degrees of head tilt. And if we found less body shift, we found less difficulties in operating the robotic scope starting at a body tilt of about 10 degrees where the problems started. We also asked the participants uh, um, on the, about their opinion on the robotic scope and what, how they feel, um, if they feel comfortable in using it. And you can see that more than 60% uh, 
feel very safe using the robotic scope and um, more than 70% find it rather easy or very easy to use and also more than 70% would like to use it more frequently. Additionally, 80% are believers that you can adopt swiftly to using the robotic scope and um, the uncertainty in using it was quite balanced so um, about 50% found that there will be a little uncertainty using it, but this is explainable with a, with a very new technology and the um, way of operating that um, robotic scope. So now I would like to show you some videos of our clinical um, usability evaluation. We did some surgeries with the robotic scope. The first is a lumbar decompression sequestrectomy. This was the first robotic scope surgery here in Innsbruck. You can see in this fast forward video that um, there were a lot of people interested in the new technology and how it works. And there were also several, let's say little problems in the beginning with the head mounted display and how to um, mount it correctly so it doesn't tilt, it doesn't um, block your view, it doesn't change the view. So we had a lot of um, fun in the first place to be very safe using it. So this is the, the exposure of the, of the interlaminar window. You see how to use the orbit mode to put it more into your view, more centrally. You see the lamina on the top side and there comes the drill next. So we do a regular interlaminar fenestration and exposure of the, flap of the, of the yellow ligament. You have to keep in mind that this um, video is recorded by only one of the camera streams of the robotic scope. So at some point I have to apologize that you will see my hands a lot in the, in the field of view. But my personal view at this time was completely unblocked. Also here it's a little dark because my, my hand is blocking um, the, the light towards the video stream. But if you use the robotic scope then you will see that this is not a problem at all because you see the, the feed coming in from two camera systems. You see the, um, the disc herniation that is removed in two pieces and you see the nice decompression that is possible by using this minimal exposure. The second surgery is an ACDF, single level ACDF. You see the um, discectomy here. And again, the movement towards the, the center so you can look down the, the cervical disc. Ventral osteophytes are reduced a little bit with a punch. And now it's, it's back centered towards the, the, the posterior ligament. Now the fellow doing the surgery is um, drilling the lower part, lower vertebra and also removing the posterior ligament with several punches. This is just to show you briefly the use on, on spinal surgery. Obviously I won't, don't want to keep you up with with this for a long time. But you can see that you can remain in the surgical field with both hands and instruments and still operate the robotic scope. This is the first cranial case we did. It's a frontal metastasis. You see the dural opening and now with the second um, dural suture you can easily see how the, the robotic scope is repositioned to fix that suture towards the muscle. Here you see the metastasis exposed. It's already circumferentially dissected.
you can see how we resect the, the remnants of the capsule from the more posterior part. And that's the beauty of the technology that you can now orbit around the, um, the resection cavity, reposition your view if there is a limit reached that is caused by the robotic arm. So you recenter the view. And now for hemostasis, you can use the orbit view to kind of look around corners or look down downwards in the more hidden angles. Another cranial case was a parasagittal meningioma done by one of our residents. Here you can see her during the surgery and the assistant using a second head mounted display. In the center you see the meningioma, you see the dural opening and parts of the lateral border exposed already put in some cottonoids. In the beginning you see that the movements are very um, subtle and it gets quicker over time. You see that the, the detachment from the from the dura and the falx. Again the repositioning at this point of the surgery comes very easy and quick so you feel comfortable quite quickly with that. For the detachment by coagulation of course now the tumor is quite loosened circumferentially dissected now she repositions the robotic scope to to look in all the angles in order to be comfortable in resecting the tumor completely so she, she's very fond of cottonoids you can see that so now the tumor is is resected completely you can look now in the cavity you see the fox in the middle the brain retracted by the tumor and this is the kind of final view of the hemostasis. But also we had some observations that um, catched our eye. You see the same surgery that you were looking now on the video that the assistant of the surgery is um, can be influenced by the robotic scope and it's quite close to his head while looking downwards this med very medial angle which is potentially a problem in cranial surgery where we used to have the resist assistant at a 90 degree angle towards the surgeon. Um, and this needs to be kept in mind. That's why the, robot the robotic arm can only move very slowly because this is a restriction as a safety measure. There is a solution. I, uh, maybe it's one. I'm, I'm not sure because I haven't tried it yet. Uh, we will try it actually today, like the day we record this talk that there is a, a mirror system attached so you have kind of a 45 degree angle and you can place the robotic scope in a different angle to see the same exposure of, um, of the surgical field. So I cannot comment on that a lot because I haven't tried it yet but I will soon and can follow up on that if necessary. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'm very sorry and I apologize that I will not be online for questions because um, the day you have this meeting, um, I will be on vacation. I called, called in this meeting. This meeting was called in for me on short notice. But I'd like to welcome you to use either my email or our webpage or social media like Twitter to get in contact. I'm very happy to receive some questions and to start some discussions. And I'd like to thank my team and my cooperators in, 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 in Europe. Um, and in the end, I'd like to say thank you for your attention and looking forward to meet at some point in time personally again. But I see that the restrictions in Australia are even harsher than ours, so it will take some time for that but I, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much.